We watched the failed 1990 television series Puchinski. And now we're gonna ask the question... Why would you make this? Hello everyone, welcome to Why Would You Make This? I am Jimmy Time. I am joined by absolutely nobody today because we can't be lovable all the time. Today's a very special episode of Why Would You Make This Special, not only because it's in video form, but also special because we are doing a television series instead of a movie. That should be fun. Well, it's not really a series so much as it was a failed pilot, because it wasn't fun at all. Yeah, so... Puchinski! Puchinski was the pilot for a television series that never made it. Obviously, one episode that aired July 9th, 1990. Let's not waste any time. The show opens on a very typical blues cop type theme that kind of sounds like a ripped off Roseanne. Car 307, proceed to magnitude saving. Interrogate a... We are then not at all introduced to Stanley Pachinski in a voiceover during the credits, and we're supposed to recognize it's the same guy when we get to the crime scene. Anyone ever tell you you got a real sexy voice? Who happens to be Peter Boyle. I actually recognize Peter Boyle as an actor, and I did not recognize that the voice and this man were the same character. Speaking of Peter Boyle, he's who stars in this show. You may recognize him from the 1974 film Young Frankenstein as the monster. Or as the every moment I live is agony dad from Everybody Loves Raymond. Everybody hates Pachinski. I feel the need to point out that his name is in fact Pachinski. Again, Pachinski. Everyone pronounces it that way. He pronounces it that way. Let's move on. Pachinski hardly does a job. He's lazy. He's smelly. Later, he's buying a hot dog when he notices three kids kicking a dog down a dark alleyway. And being the upstanding police officer that he is, he casually saunters down the alley and pulls a gun on the three children. I mean, they did pull a knife on him first, but, I mean, they're like eight, twelve max. It's, it's fine. So this is how the story picks up. The dog is alone, he's being beaten on, he's hungry, he's smelly, he's just like Pachinski, so Pachinski owns him now. Alright, commercial break, right? That's, I mean, we got a lot to think about. Let's see, it's, uh... Uh, Pachinski found a dog, right? And then, uh, he, he kept the dog. All right, good commercial break. Let's go back to, what's that? There's still a minute and 30 worth of commercials. That's, uh, that's a lot. This is, this is going to be rough. It's going to be, it's, it's going to be rough. You get it, folks? It'll be rough. <laughs> Let's not do that again. All right. I see why commercials are... They're, they're long now. I see that now. Oh, boy. Okay. So when we get back, Pachinski and the dog are best friends, and this disgusts everyone. His partner has to be reassigned, but the chief reminds him that Pachinski caught the postal bomber and the east side strangler. You can't just let good cop work like that go. So get back out there and go on that stakeout that you apparently have to do right now. So, off they go. Everybody falls in love somehow. Now everybody. While on the stakeout, we continue to learn that Pachinski is a terrible cop. La 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 la. Pachinski, for God's sakes, this is a stakeout. During the stakeout, they go ahead and they talk about their personal lives. We learn that the partner has a woman he's interested. While well, Pachinski seems to have whores. I, I think whores. As girlfriends. So they talk about their personal lives and argue over I, something, whatever. Luckily, the woman who's being robbed nearby them screams and they can actually get back to their job. Hey! Don't be a hero! After a bit of a runaround, Pachinski gets it in front of the perp and pulls his gun on him and... Oh wait, that dog I have, it seems to be crawling out in front of the street. Well, I'm a 55-year-old cop. I think now's a good time to risk both my life and career for an animal I only just met. Yeah, that's... that makes sense. Also, I should let a perp go. Probably. Potentially. Yeah, it all adds up. It all adds up. Okay, so... Pachinski goes and he saves the dog. 
but gets run over himself. Hmm. Now, death is a very serious, tragic event that should be handled with absolute respect, so let's go ahead and cut to Jay Delta, see what he thinks about the situation. So any time that I see death, any kind of slow, tragic death in a film or TV, there's one thing I can't help but think of, and that's this. He's not wrong. At the funeral, the partner, whose name I've still yet to learn, even though he tried to save Pachinski's life, is the last one left. Pachinski says, don't beat yourself up, kid, and that's when the ghost of Pachinski shows up. No, I'm kidding. That'd be we A ghost in a cop show? What are you kidding? Stop. That's ridiculous. No, no. He's a talking dog. Ha! Surprise! Not telepathic, either. It's a dog that speaks English. I mean, it makes sense. He's an English bulldog, so he should probably speak English. <laughs> So, uh, Pachinski, yeah, that's it. So Pachinski's name is Puchinski now, because why not, you know? And despite that he's suddenly a dog, he's much more focused on revenge. He actually likes being a dog a little bit better than a human. What's wrong with being a dog? You got stronger teeth? You can take a nap anytime you want? You see a girl you like? You don't have to bother with small talk. The partner seems fine with it too, so, I mean... Let's go solve that murder. What are you going to do now? Well, first I'm going to try licking myself, and then I'm going to catch my killer, and you're going to help. We go to the police station real quick, just so we can see the partner fail at trying to get back on the case, and Puchinski and dog form hump a woman's chest. <laughs> he likes to scratch. <laughs> Let's just see what Delta thinks about this. Delta? <laughs> He, again, not wrong. <laughs> the episode feels like it probably should be over by now, but it has to reintroduce and then end a love story, so let's, let's get into that. The partner, as stated during the stakeout, has the hots for a neighbor lady with a daughter. The neighbor is actually played by Amy Yesbeck, whom you'll recognize from the Problem Child movies, The Mask, uh, Robin Hood Men in Tights, or the television series Wings. Puchinski tries real hard to get the two together, even though there's a young female child in the room with them at all times. Right now. Oh, it's okay. I know what it's like. In order to further along the story, this upstanding young police officer kicks the talking dog out of his home and hopes he doesn't die in the streets. Luckily, the next day when Puchinski comes back, he brings the attractive neighbor with him in an attempt to get them together once more. Oh, but don't worry, her daughter's there as well. Pachinski and the partner get into a little fight talking about how Pachinski needs to look for his murderer and he can still do great police work. I mean, what about that, that east side bomber and the postal strangler he caught? Don't forget about that stuff. So after the fight, Pachinski locks himself in the bathroom, then unlocks the door and realizes he's not human anymore and he can't do the things he used to be able to do when he was human. Despite doing things that need thumbs and he successfully did, there were no problems with opening and locking that door. But now that he has a mirror in front of him, he's realized that he can't do things that he loves, like go for walks or be with his girlfriend. So the partner gives Puchinski a little bit of a pep talk, saying that life is life, and no matter what, we're still friends. This kind of makes Puchinski happy. Happy enough to go right back to the murder site and hunt down his killer. And that's exactly where we go, because at the ATM, Puchinski is just... Sitting, waiting, hoping, wishing, other parts of a Jack Johnson song. Well, I was sitting, waiting, wishing. Luckily all that stuff pays off because the man hit the same ATM. Also, Puchinski notices his smell. Because why not? Yeah! So they chase his killer, they corner him in an alley and go ahead. Go ahead, guess what he does. You take a guess. Guess what he does. Did you say he jumps off a roof at them? He does that. I don't know how you guessed that. That's, that's good. You have skills. But then he... I'll have you know I did not enjoy that. And he got a medal for it. So back at the apartment, the two boys can't decide what to watch on TV. 
So Puchinski eats the partner's slippers. Ha <laughs> ha! The end! This is probably a good time to remind everyone that this was supposed to be a pilot. Meaning that this episode was supposed to get you interested in hearing more about the story. Except, I, is that, let me make sure this is right. Yeah, yeah, story's over. It's done. They finished it. They caught the killer. They got an award. You don't just give a dog an award. So, I presume he's back on the force as well. At this point, the show seems nothing more than a, a buddy cop. Uh, mixed with a little bit of how come this normal white guy can't find love and and a dog so uh, Like Alf like just Alf with less cats, maybe no there probably would have been more cats It was only the first episode. I take that back. All right, so then I mean why would you make this? What's the appeal? Just seeing an officer of the law talk to a dog every week. That's Actually sounds when you put it that way. It's an officer of the law Getting you a shouting match with a dog every single week. That's... No, wait, that's how this started! That's how this started! No! 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 Don't do it! Oh, come on, Pachinski. So that was Pachinski, the failed 1990 television series starring Peter Boyle as a puppet dog that's somehow just real enough to not be creepy. If you enjoyed this, please check out www.ymt.com for more. And, of course, tell your friends about it. So I am Jimmy Time, and for Jay Delta, please remember that without the mistakes of others, we would be forced to endure the pain of failure ourselves. Support the arts.